In part one, we were able to use a function generator to modulate a 10 MHz carrier to transmit a song through a coaxial cable to a spectrum analyzer that was able to demodulate it and play it back. In this video, we try to do away with the coax cable and transmit our signal over a wireless link. Let's start again with an amplitude modulated signal with a carrier frequency of 10 MHz and a modulation frequency of 1 kHz. We will again set the center frequency to that of the carrier adjust the amplitude reference level, and then reduce the span. In this case, the instrument automatically adjusted the resolution bandwidth when we changed the span, and this resolution bandwidth is indeed low enough for us to see three distinct spectral components. Incidentally, this instrument has a cool and super useful feature that allows us to see all its settings at a glance. This can be done by selecting Setup, and then Config Overview. Let's turn the modulation off for now, so all that we're left with is the carrier. This will make it easier to explain the frequency translation mechanism. Our objective is to shift our carrier frequency up to the hundreds of megahertz region, where the wavelength will be much shorter, since this will enable us to use much smaller antennas. This process is called up conversion, and it can be done by means of nonlinear devices called mixers. Mixers are a big topic, so in this video we won't go into the details of their operation. We will just look at them as black boxes with two input ports and one output port that perform a specific function. At port 1, often called the intermediate frequency port, we will have the 10 MHz signal that we want to upconvert. At port 2, often called the local oscillator port, we will have a fixed signal whose frequency represents the amount by which we want to shift the IF signal. In our case, this will be 636.5 MHz. At port 3, the output port, if this was an ideal mixer, we would only have two frequency components, which are the sum and difference of LO and IF frequencies. Practical mixers are very nonlinear devices, so many additional frequency components will be produced that must be handled appropriately, but these are beyond the scope of this video. However, there are a couple of unwanted spectral components that are relatively easy to understand. Ideally, we would have perfect isolation between these three ports, but in practice, some of the IF power will directly leak through to the output port, and some of the LO power will also leak to the output port. We will see how we can use the latter very shortly. So, let's get back to the lab and start working on our app conversion. For the app conversion, I will be using a mixer which is included in a Roger Schwartz teaching board. This is the IF port, this is the output port, and the LO signal is fixed and provided by the board. You can pick two frequencies for the LO using the jumpers on the board, and I've selected the highest one, which is 636.5 MHz. Both the mixer and the signal generator that produces the LO signal require DC supplies to operate. This can be provided either via a micro or a mini USB port. Now that the board is powered up, let's check that the local oscillator is operating as expected. But hold on, there is no external port for it. So how do we do that? Well, most practical mixers will have limited isolation between the LO and RF ports, so hopefully some of the LO power will leak through to the output port and we will be able to see it. So let's connect the output of the mixer to our spectrum analyzer and let's change the center frequency to the nominal one of the LO. 636.5 MHz. Oops, there's nothing there. But I think I know what's going on. The span is very narrow, just 6 kHz. But when generating higher frequencies, it is more difficult to achieve a high level of accuracy. So let's widen the span a little and see what's in the neighborhood of our nominal frequency. And there it is, our LO sneaking out of the upper port. So it's all good. Our mixer and LO are alive and kicking. Now let's place a marker on the LO and use this useful function to set the center frequency to that of the marker. Now let's widen the span to 30 MHz. The reason why I'm doing this is that when we connect our input signal to the IF port, we should see two frequency components, one 10 MHz below and one 10 MHz above that of the LO. Now let's connect our 10 MHz unmodulated carrier signal to the input port of the mixer and see what happens. 
just as expected, we have two frequency components, which are situated at the sum and difference of the LO and IF frequencies. Now, what will happen if we turn on the AM modulation? You can see things changing all the time, and this is again to do with the resolution bandwidth, which is not small enough to resolve the amplitude modulation components. We could set it to a lower value, but with a span this large, this would mean that the analyzer would have to measure a lot of points and this would take a lot of time. What we can do instead is pick one of the two components, for example the lowest one, set the center frequency to that of the respective marker and then reduce the span. Now we can also increase the granularity of our measurements by decreasing the resolution bandwidth to a point where we can see three distinct components. Now let's recenter things a little stick a marker on the carrier and see if we can demodulate the signal now that the carrier frequency has been shifted from 10 to 626.5 MHz. This is working very nicely, and the fact that the frequency of the carrier is much higher will now enable us to use some relatively compact antennas to go wireless. I wonder if the antennas of my wireless microphone receiver will work at our frequency. Let's give it a go. Let's connect one to the output of the mixer, and the other to the input of the spectrum analyzer. By the way, this instrument is very versatile and we could have used it in VNA mode to look at the reflection coefficient of our antennas and determine if they were usable at our carrier frequency. Incidentally, although as ChatGPT says, the use of AM modulation has diminished significantly compared to its heyday, it is still utilized for some important applications such as aviation.